Okay, so uh, good morning everyone. We were having a few technical issues, so sorry about that. <laughs> um, David is, is here to join us now. Um, so um, if anyone's got any questions, please send them in um, and we'll get the Q&A started. So David, do you want to give us a little bit of an overview of the course just to begin with? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. If you could talk about like the different courses that we offer in construction and joinery, uh, just to give people a bit of an overview in case they don't know anything about the courses. Yeah. Can you hear me, David? I'll hold it. Yeah, so I, I've got two. Uh, I've got seem got two. Um, OK, yeah. you can talk now. Yeah, what we've got, we've got two. Um, if you're starting fresh, uh, want to come into the construction industry, don't know where you want to, to go, we do a construction diploma, which is a skills uh, course where you'll do uh, brickwork, plumbing, plastic, uh, all the various crafts. You have a taste of those and you have a look, think about what you've got to do. You want to do. If you want to work board, you start at level one. Uh, carpentry and joinery, building on skills and moving on to a site carpentry or bench carpentry, uh, bench joinery, whichever you want to do. Um, we then lead on to brickwork, plastic, uh, electrical, etc. That's really down to what you want at the end of the day. You'll get your taste the thing. That's about what we do. So we've had a question coming in. Um, one second, I think it's just loading. Um, that says, "What kit do I need?" What kit you need? Uh, you need personal protective equipment, which is uh, safety footwear. You'll need uh, over trousers for the workshops. You'll need a shirt to go over, uh, which keeps you nice and clean. Well, work. It's dusty. We then move out. Um, break areas. It's like what we tend to do is you come in, see this, you actually work in the site, and you're then you're working in somebody's house. You want to go walking through somebody's house with your dirty boots, etc. Then you get changed and working into the work areas, walking to the breakout areas. You also, if you um, are successful on an interview, you get a list of different uh, items you need from. Books, tools and equipment. If you went up to level two, tools and equipment, uh, your pencil, pens, etc. Uh, that will come through, come out. You should be successful with your interview. So, but mainly at the moment in time, personal equipment, of safety boots, over clothes, over trousers, over shirts. And do the college supply any of that, or does everyone, do the students need to supply that themselves? Students have to supply those, yeah, especially the books, especially uh, PPE. It's personal um, uh, information, personal details, personal um, material, etc. I mean, they'll need safety boots in the workplace anyway, won't they? So it's yeah, a good sure. investment. Yeah, yeah. Um, brilliant. Um, lovely. Let's have a look if we've got any more questions. I think um, Daniel sent us a message to say the sound quality is a little bit intermittent, so apologies about that. I think um, it's just one of those things when you go live, isn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> We, um, this is the first Q&A that one of the first that we've done this morning, so um, we're just um, working out a few teething problems. <laughs> OK. So oh, we've had a couple of questions come in now. Let's have a look. Um, someone's asked, is there any particular website to get kit from or does any PP or does any PP OK like colour, etc? Um, so yeah, do we do they need to get a particular colour or a particular brand, David? Um, if well, if, you, if you're successful in, in the interview, you get a on, uh, we use the supplier, which will, will, we, we have discounts on uh, kit, um, etc. PPE. Um, so I, I'd hold fine until we get a letter to you, give you a details, and they will then. Uh, you can actually buy from those, and it's a lot cheaper, and it's all branded up as well. No one's going to brand on, on the um, on the shirts, uh, etc. So I, I'd wait 
hopefully do go, go through the interview process, then uh, get a list um, for the contact details, for the companies we use to be, to be a lot safer. Yeah, so um, someone's asked, can a, a kit list be emailed to students starting in September? So yes, I think we normally publish those on the website. Um, and um, like David said, we can give you a list of, of good suppliers. Um, there'll also be more information at enrolment as well. So um, don't worry too much about that, but that's a great idea. We can get that information out to students that have had an offer. Yeah, um, yeah no problem. Um, another question that's come in, what work experience will I get? Work experience varies. Uh, ironically, we have talked about in Bucking House yesterday on a straight project, which we're, we're interested in being in, um, where we're looking to work with a contractor, um, rebuild several um, contents which we deal with, we use. Uh, it really depends on time limits. But we are looking to put a lot more work experience into that into that areas. Um, do we use the our estates a lot? Do we do work experience? Have you worked with the estates? Um, you're given uh, jobs to do. You're working with different people. So you, what we're trying to do is build up employability skills. You can to be communication, etc. And you're given uh, to do X or Y, and you've got to work with materials. You've got to talk to people. You've got to make sure it's a good quality. Want, etc. So it's either in house work experience or start doing things outside. We've got a number, say, number of contacts um, where we would like to put you in into different places. But if you've got anything yourself where you can actually get work experience, it would be great. Uh, as long as we know, as long as it's safe and we put some checks in, we can use those as well. The ideal. Brilliant. Yeah, it's obviously work experience is very important and we have quite a big of uh, quite a lot of big construction and joinery companies in Melton and the surrounding areas, don't we, that we yes. can work with. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Um, Daniel has asked, um, what are the hours? Is it five days a week? No, it's three days a week. Uh, it's 9.30 to 4.30. Or uh, the days at the moment, we're not sure. Uh, to so three days. Uh, in pe that period of time, you, you're probably doing your maths if you have a great you know, um, theory work and work three days a week, 9 30 to 4 30, with breaks in between. Yeah, like David, if anyone didn't hear that, David just said um, that the if you need to retake your maths and English GCSE, you can do that with us, and that will um, take up some of the time during the week as well. Um, our courses do start slightly later in the morning to accommodate uh, the fact that a lot of our students come in via bus from the surrounding areas. So if that's something that um, would be an interest to you, um, we can get you in touch with the transport team as well today. Um, we've had another question come in. Thank you everyone for all the questions. Um, how do you think the construction course will work in September if social distancing and possible further lockdown happens? Um, I, I will answer this one if that's OK with you, David. Um, Obviously, this is something that um, everybody wants to know at the moment. And as a college, we're really keen to um, get you those answers. Um, the, le the message that has been agreed this week is that it's likely that we're going to have a blended approach to learning, well, especially when we come back in September. Um, so this will consist of um, some online work, some classroom practical work. Um, obviously, we want students to be doing the practical lessons as much as possible, but um, at the moment we're still trying to work out what those guidelines are going to be from the government um, and how we're going to accommodate having the same amount of students, but perhaps having to be spread out across the week slightly more. So um, there will be practical work involved. Uh, don't worry about that. Um, but everyone's going to have to adapt to this situation. So as soon as we know more, uh, please keep an eye on the website because we do put a lot of our updates on there and also on social media as well. Um, uh, sorry, that's still slightly vague, I know, but um, that's the most information we can give at the moment. Thank you. Um, OK, another question that's come in. I was offered a place on the level one construction course last month, but this subject to the college being able to support me with my educational needs, possible reset maths and English or both. I haven't yet received any further guidance about this. Please, can you advise who to contact? OK, um, sorry you haven't heard anything yet. If you could send an email to 
course inquiries at brooksbymelton.ac.uk um, we'll be able to get that sorted for you. That, um, that email address is published all over the virtual open day site today. Um, so if you didn't catch that, you'll be able to find it on there. Um, but the, my team are working today um, and we'll be answering those emails. So please send that in. Thank you. Lovely. Um, OK, yeah, we'll keep summarising what David's saying. because I think he's, <laughs> he's having a few technical issues. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, so um, David, what are the different entry requirements that are required for each level? Uh, well, we, unless you've got prior qualifications uh, or pro a lot of experience, always students uh, on a level one course, which get the basic skills, push forward, give too much of a uh, jump to go from experience to level two, course, even though they might have uh, good GCSEs. So, what we look at is um, your prior knowledge, your prior experience, prior qualifications. To give you an example of last year, uh, one young lad came on board. He uh, started on level one uh, construction. He already done part of the construction course previously at school. He wanted to be a player, so he went direct to uh, the Brick Lane course. Uh, we, we, if you have got previous uh, case, you go on to the next level of course. But if you've got um, some experience, Fast track you through the level one. But what we don't want to do is to go to a level two or to a higher course and we'll say to fail. We never do that. We're going to make sure you've got the knowledge, the skills to build on future. If you go on to level one, level sorry, level two, level threes, etc., and move on upwards that, that way. So you, you can go all the way up through to degree level uh, through through the process if you wish. There is a route all the way through. We don't want you to fail at the early stages. We want to make sure you've got a really, really good grounded in the basic skills, build on those, and so forth. Lovely, thank you. Um, so just in case anyone didn't hear little bits of that, um, what David was saying was um, essentially it's affected by what your GCSE grades are and what your previous work experiences will affect which level you go on to. Uh, we offer level one through to level three um, at Brooksby Melton College. Um, so to do the level one, you just need the one GCSE at grade E slash two or above, um, and you'll be given an initial assessment at your interview. Um, to do the level two, you would need two GCSEs at grade D slash three or above. Um, and then the level three would be um, similar, but you need your maths and English as well. Um, and you can retake that with us if you need to. Um, OK, I'm just going to move on because we've had quite a few more questions in, actually, um, which is brilliant. How much written work is involved? What is the ratio of written work against practical work? Well, you have uh, six sessions in English If uh, on the course have one period on written work, there are theory tests, Test, test if you come on to the level, uh, level carpentry and jump rare. So you'll be doing one session. It's roughly about 70% is practical, 30% is theory. But with the th uh, lessons, you'll be doing some theory work as well to understand what you're doing, understand the materials, the tools, the, the practices, the, the processes, etc. of what you're doing. And they are tested both practical wise and theory wise as well. So you, you, you will have uh, a practical test, you have a theory test within each unit as well. But two units, every course you do will have a, either an online or a paper based exam. So it's all about 70 uh, practical theory. Lovely, thank you. Um, Daniel's also asked when are the interviews, so I can cover that one. Um, once you apply, um, we're really quick on getting back to you. So if you were to apply, apply today, for example, our team might even be able to process it today, if not on Monday. And then you would be invited for a telephone interview um, sometime within the next couple of weeks, depending on um, staffing availability. Um, it's just quite an informal interview to see um, why you want to do the course, what your current experience is, that sort of thing. And then um, hopefully we'll be able to send you an offer off the back of that. 
And then um, we have some student welcome days at the end of June going into the beginning of July, which will be virtual. Um, obviously, we had hoped to do these physically, but I think they're still going to have to be virtual at this stage. Um, and then you will go on to do enrolment um, at the end of August, beginning of September. Um, I hope that helps with that question. Um, Daniel also asked, will there be an opportunity to come and have a look round? Um, it's a difficult one at the moment. Um, obviously, we would love for you to be able to do that. Um, but as it is at the moment, um, that's not a possibility. Um, we keep reviewing the situation all the time. So if we can let people to come in, um, then of course we'll have another open day where you can do that. Um, but the team have put together quite a lot of resources on the virtual open day pages today. So please have a look. There's a tour of Brooksby um, on the main Brooksby page. Um, so hopefully it will give you a good idea of what the college looks like and the social areas and the classroom areas as well. There's some really good 360 photos of the construction classrooms on there. Um, so it gives you a bit of a better idea of, um, of where you would be studying. Um, so um, someone has asked any guidance on how the COVID issues have impacted on apprenticeships as trades in general, please. Any Anything you can offer on that one, David? Uh, we're still looking into apprenticeships. Um, we look at guidance, uh, what they're expecting. Uh, it's again, it's a situation where you don't know the market. There's some companies uh, the big companies are are actually working on site at the moment, sites on the moment. Uh, smaller, uh, what we call SMEs, small to medium sized employers um, are working. Uh, but how they're going to it's going to impact in September with apprenticeships we really don't know we we are trying to get guidance from the government the government's given a lot of guidance out at the moment we, we're working with uh, companies to see what's happening um, we, are, we are trying our most to get apprenticeships but we've got a number of students starting in September uh, over the next few months we are working with companies to see what's happening with, with, with the how we can help as well yeah, I think my advice with that would be would be to apply for a full time construction or joinery course at the college um, and then still try and pursue an apprenticeship if that's what you want to do. But at least you've got the backup of a full time course to start in September if you can't get a placement with an apprenticeship. Yeah. Um, and because we just don't know at the moment. Um, some of the smaller builders and um, companies in general are, are still taking on apprentices, like David's saying, but um, it's just there's obviously a lot of people wanting to do those apprenticeships, so um, I would apply for a full time course as a backup if if you can do so. Um, we've just got a few more minutes left, um, so there's one more question come in, which I think David covered slightly, but um, I think we might have missed it. He said, are there exams at the end of the course? The exams are on throughout the course. Uh, different, different units, different units. Care what you, what you, you look for. And the, uh, each unit has a practical exam and theory exam. So that could be any type of warmer This one could be uh, July time. There are two uh, online exams, and what we tend to do with those one is health and safety, which is paramount to whatever you do in the construction industry. Uh, we try to get that done prior to Christmas. Then we move on to uh, what we call construction technology, how buildings are built. With the health and safety exam, uh, which uh, we've got that done at Christmas, uh, there's all the construction skills, the certification uh, card, where that allows you access to construction sites, big construction sites. And once you've done your health and safety exam, we can actually put you in, uh, it's, it's a little bit of extra cost, and you can get your CSF card, it allows you to go on construction sites. Site, which will look on your CV, it also benefit for your friendships, etc. Yeah, there's no year exams, the exams are ongoing throughout the year, both and theory. Lovely, thank you. Uh, so, just time for one more question, then we'll have to end. Um, is there any update on bursary applications? When are they being released? Um, I would have to check that for you. If you wouldn't mind, please send an email to course inquiries 
at brooksbymelton.ac.uk and we will uh, forward that on to the finance team who should be able to get you an answer today hopefully um, and um, we'll get that sorted for you not to worry um, lovely um, just quickly someone's asked um, how have students how have current students been taught over the last few months um, it's all been online theory based time it, David and yeah yeah it's all theory based uh, with different methods we've uh, done online classroom based uh, teaching with videos etc we've done uh, activities uh, all linking into either now or so we're trying to prep them for work for next year as well uh it's been it's been successful with the feedback we've got getting now from students it's been successful uh and and, and they've enjoyed what they've done uh and they've they've learnt a lot yeah i think um the nice thing about one nice thing about our college is that because we're not a huge college um and our learner numbers are relatively small it means that the relationship that the students have with the tutors is very good so that has really worked to our advantage in this situation because it means that each individual student is really well looked after um and of course that's the same when we are actually in college as well um you're not just one of thousands of students doing a construction course you're um you're really part of the family, as we like to say. So as cheesy as that is, um, that's going to wrap up the call. <laughs> well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. Um, we've had a really great amount of questions, um, but if anyone does have any other questions they'd like to ask, please email them into us and um, I will send them on to David to answer today. Um, apologies for the technical issues we had. Um, but we got there in the end. Um, I have to also tell you that uh, we do have accommodation on site at Brooksby um and there um if you need any more information on that please let us know and um, there are a few rooms left but it's filling up fast so um if that's something you're interested in please let us know when you apply um thank you david for everything um and um, that's everything from us thanks bye yeah, thank you, thank you. Take, care. take care